Hello and welcome to today's God TV Together, where we as a God TV family get to share in all that God has for us in encouragement and in wisdom and in fellowship. I'm joined by my good friends, Emma and Fergus. Welcome to the show today. Isn't it fun? It's so nice. I don't think we've all done one together yet this year. And what is it? No, no, March. It's great, isn't it? <laughs> um, I am just uh, really pleased to be talking today on a very difficult subject. So mm. today we're looking at how to deal with anxiety, fear and worry. Now, it's, I don't think that we'll have the answers, but hopefully <laughs> we'll find some encouragement for everybody at home. I'm hoping that I find the answers actually, <laughs> yeah, this programme, if I'm being honest. This is a topic that I actually really struggle with. Yeah. Um, because I'm, I, I think mostly my uh, anxiety, worry, all of those things are built around my lack of patience <laughs> so yeah exactly I, I struggle to live by um you know that 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 gospel truth that we live by faith and not by sight you know mm. and god has promised us something or if we know that there's something coming that waiting period of patience i find i, I struggle so much in this area so i'm looking forward to seeing what we learn today <laughs> yeah i know and sometimes fergus you know we want to kind of fix things especially as men mm. and that moves us into uh, a kind of fear of sure of like what next and you know we deal with we might deal with uh the situation quite well but then you know we don't deal with the emotions of it you know i actually want to start with actually saying how much i'm enjoying the fact that when we all came to work this morning we decided to all wear black oh right yeah. so you know when we're dealing <laughs> with a series anyway. of fear and worry and yep. anxiety we're all sort of wearing our darkest gear but actually it really is possible to find strength in this area it really is possible to grow from the weakest place perhaps and find just a little bit of strength we're going to share lots of video inserts with us today and pray and discuss with you these things that we find very difficult. But first, here's an incredible encouragement on how to overcome anxiety. When Jesus talks about worry and anxiety, one of the things that he does is he says, Kathy, you have to recognize who God is. In the middle of our worry and our anxiety, we have a really small, eensy, teensy, weensy view of who God is. And we have a really large, grandiose view of who we are. If God can feed the birds and clothe the grass, he's that capable. Could he not provide for my needs? When I think of my vision of God, imagine if you were to go outside and to stare at the sun, you could take this eensy, teensy, small coffee straw and begin to attempt to line it up just right to view God through that straw. Or you could go outside, no filter, no binoculars, no telescope and stand in front of the sun and just look up. Our anxieties are like viewing just a small part of who God is. When we need to go outside and stand in front of the full glory of God, the goodness of God, the knowledge of God, the power of God. And what happens when we do that, we slowly see that we don't have much to be anxious about. I mean, he's in control, he's good, he knows. And Jesus equates it to a lack of faith here. Lord, help me to really believe who you say you are. I'm struggling to think you're distant. I'm in trouble with you, that you're uncaring. Please help me not to give in to those thoughts, Lord. Please help me to genuinely understand you according to your word as you have revealed yourself. Who are you? When we try to be God, we do a lousy job. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's what anxiety tells us. What a kind thing for God to allow us to experience anxiety because it draws us back into only He's in control. Yeah, anxiety is a difficult subject that we all have to deal with um, in our lives at some point because, you know, God says there will be troubles and we're going to face yeah. troubles and. Uh, we know what the scriptures say, Fergus. We, you know, Emma, you were saying, you know, uh, we we know that God says, "Do not be anxious for anything." Yeah. And yet, what our heart does, you know, what our spirit feels, might be different than what um, yeah. we know we should live out. Absolutely, and it, and I think the this is the beauty of faith, right? So there there is this 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 space where we are worried, anxious, where we are actually, what it boils down to, we're not in control of the situation. Right. Like the situation is out of our control and that is where anxiety and fear then 
come in and that is where God wants to work that is the place where God wants to build faith that's the place where God wants to say you know all right Fergus it's okay it's okay Emma it's okay Ian Mm. I've got this give it over to me so where did we go in the fall Mm. whereby the answer to the stuff we deal with is we have to be in control I'll fix it I'll manage it I'll do it give it to me Mm. when in fact the Lord actually is saying be anxious for nothing, but, 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 but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, yeah. let your requests be made known to God. Mm-hmm. And the peace that passes what we understand yeah. mm. will essentially guide us through those difficult moments. Mm. I think the anxiety comes from the control that yeah. we're not managing. Exactly. And therefore, because we're, fa- for want of a better term, we're failing to control it well. Yeah we think the wheels are falling off the bus. Mm -hmm. And the Lord is like, I mean, you've got kids, I've got kids. Um, We keep trying to give Ian our kids. Um, (laughs) But but just because they're worried, just because the wheel falls off their bicycle, just because they didn't Mm. score the goal, doesn't necessarily mean that mum and dad can't fix it. And then times a bazillion, the Lord is in control. Yeah, and it's it's so true, isn't it? You know, if, if I was talking to my own child about something that was going on, in their lives that that wasn't going according to plan, you know, then we would be saying all these things. It's okay. It will be all right. It will work itself out. Better things are to come. Such that just as much as God is saying exactly that to us. But I think it comes from, I, I mean, I can only talk for myself here, but I think for me, it's definitely from a place of those things that I can't control, where I can't see where the solution is coming. Small thing. I'm trying to sell my house at the moment, okay? We've had one viewing in three months. Pray, pray. It's driving me insane. And the reason it's driving me crazy is because, you know, God has confirmed already the house we are to move to. And I'm just like, I just want to crack on now. I just want to get going. But trying to kind of remain in a position of faith in knowing that God will fulfill all that he said he was going to fulfill because he is a God of his word and promise so, but so, waiting in that waiting room so, at the same so time. So why, why, why don't we do what James is the half brother of Jesus? Okay, yeah. so the book of James at the back of the Bible, he was around the house when they were, you know, setting up their their table every day, mm. and he says, "Count it all joy when you're in trouble." <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Because trouble with joy produces patience, and patience means you don't need it. Yeah, but hearing and application are two different things, right? <laughs> yeah, and you know that's. I think I think that's that's the challenge is. We, you have to just work with exactly where you're at yep. because piling more pressure on in the moment when you do feel anxious or you do feel worried, then saying, oh, this is a sin and I shouldn't feel like this and I know what God's word says. It's just extra that you don't need. And at prayer and supplication, I mean, that's the starting place, isn't it? Mm. Is getting on your knees, supplicating, surrendering to God, to Ba-boom. Jesus, mm. saying, I am not in control. This isn't going well. And I give it back to you. I lay it at the feet of the cross. I put it at the feet of Jesus. So I supplicate myself and then I pray. Yeah. And, and I pray right where I'm at. So if right where you're at is I'm suffering because I am worried and anxious, then that's what you pray. You say, God, I'm really anxious mm. and I'm suffering and I'm sorry. Yeah. But help me. And, help me where I'm at. Yeah. And I love that we can be honest with God like mm. that. And we and we can see it all the way through the Bible. You know, I love the Psalms of David where he's like, Lord, I can't hear you. Where are you? I'm suffering and, and I can't feel your presence. You're not here with me. I love you and trust you, but where are you? You know, we do have those times, don't we, where we're in situations. And do you know what? I was just thinking, funnily enough, it's, it's often the times where the situations that we're in actually aren't as big. It's sometimes in the smaller things or in the medium things, because when we're going through the really, really hard things, yeah. actually, sometimes the peace of God in those times is so much more profound. Amen. Amen. But he's asking us to give over the small things, the medium things and the big things, you know. <laughs> so so God TV family, while we sit and share some of the woes that we're going through, <laughs> not only pray for us because obviously we need it, but perhaps we can learn from one another that there really is grace in the hard season. I'm, I'm an ex-worryholic. <laughs> but I am an, or a recovering recovering worryholic, new words. (laughs) But you can grow stronger in the place that you've been weak. 
Yeah. yeah. And, the, you know, there are plenty of people out there who are going to feel worried and are going to start to blame themselves. And, you know, our encouragement to you today is, is you know, to try to stop, to take some time for yourself, uh, find that joy and that peace in that, you know, God's got it and he has a plan for your life. And here's our friend Keith Mitchell to share a bit more about how we as a God TV family can deal with anxiety, fear and worry. Everyone watching this at some point in your life will have to deal with worry and anxiety and fear. It comes to all of us. Uh, the secret is how we manage it in the moment. It reminds me of a story of something that happened to me when I was 15 years of age. It started on a Saturday football match. A couple of hard tackles became an argument, became a fight. They developed two months later into a full-blown fight. I got five stitches on my head. It wasn't so much the pain from the five stitches, but it was the worry afterwards. Was it over? Would the fight start again? I spent years looking over my shoulder, trying to avoid the wrong guy and being caught in the wrong neighborhood. So about two years after the headbutt incident, I'm in Belfast city center with my girlfriend and who walks up beside me at these very traffic lights, but the very same guy we had to fight with. And he says to me, hey Mitch, still playing football? Good to see you again. And he walks on, I mean, he walks on. I've been worried for two years about another fight and he's not even thinking about it. And that's the danger of worry and anxiety and fear. It gets a hold of your life. Often the other person isn't even thinking about it and it captures you. Worry, anxiety, fear, unforgiveness. They're all real character crushers. And that's not what Jesus wants from our lives. In fact, the Bible has hundreds of verses that say, do not fear. Do not worry about tomorrow. Be anxious for nothing. I want to read to you a verse in the Bible from Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 that I hope and pray will be helpful for you today. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. Be anxious for nothing. That word anxious means to be torn in two, literally, and sometimes worry and fear and anxiety can do that. Richard Foster, in his classic book, A Celebration of Discipline, invites us to take a posture where we place the palms of our hands, lay them on our legs, and to pray, and just to lay down all our worries, burdens, and fears. And as I close today, you pray your own prayer, your best prayer, and lay your worries and your burdens and your fears onto Jesus. Oh, thank you so much there, Keith, for that wonderful reminder. You know, we are to lift up all of our anxious thoughts, all of our worries, our concerns, our fears to the Lord. Give them over to him. He says that his burden is easy and his yoke is light. We are to give everything over to the Lord and carry nothing of that worry ourselves. But you know, if you are worrying about something, if there's something on your mind that you want to share, if you're suffering under a spirit of fear right now, then there is a number on your screen. You can call us. We would love to pray with you. Or you can go to god.tv forward slash prayer and leave your prayer request there as well. We're going to be praying for you right here in the studio just after this short break. Hebrews chapter 12 urges us to run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Our race at God TV is around the world, proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ via media 24 hours a day. Will you prayerfully consider running with us as ongoing support or for the first time, helping us fund God TV on Freeview to 13 million viewers in every home, hotel, hospital, prison, and other residents across the UK. Call the number on your screen or visit god.tv forward slash run together.
Worship is when God invites us in. It doesn't say that he's looking for worship. He's looking for worshipers because he understands that when you worship him as a worshiper, your life changes. If we're not expectant, then we generally get into pessimism. We as the people of God have to stir up an expectancy the time and season we are in. This is the time to actually taste, not just dream about. We're called to be dreamers, but we're also called to be those that actually eat. Welcome back to God TV Together, where we've been talking about fear, worry, and anxiety. And we said that we need to supplicate ourselves and to spend some time in prayer, and that is going to help us with that fear and anxiety. Well, we're going to do that right now. Fergus, can you read out some of the prayer requests, some of the things that people are worried about? Absolutely, yes. Already Prakash in India. I can't walk properly for a long time. I'm going for a medical test on Friday. Kindly pray with much burden that every test would come through normal in Jesus' name. Andrew right. in the US is, please pray for healing for my mum. In Manuel in Spain, please pray for my brother to be healed from liver cancer. Jordan in the US, please pray for demonic attack, for deliverance and demonic attack. Lisa in India, please pray for the purchase of our new house as we're experiencing delay. And then Tina in the UK, please pray for a friend who's having difficulty at mm. home. Emma, I wonder if you'd lead us in prayer over these yeah, subjects. Absolutely, yeah. I just want you to just close your eyes Amen. right now and just feel the peace of God upon you and just lift all of your worries, all of your cares up to the Lord right now. Yeah, Father God, we thank you, Lord, that you are a God who cares. We thank you, Lord, that you are concerned about the small things in our lives and the big things, Father. And we just come to you right now with the things that are on our hearts, for the things that we would love to see you working on in us and through us in our lives, Father. We lift up to you our relatives and ourselves, Lord, if we are feeling poorly or sick in any way, we ask all that you would enter in with your healing, Father God, that you would bring full restoration to the bodies. Father, that you bring full restoration to our minds in Jesus' name, that you would release right now depression, that you'd release anxiety, that you'd release spirit of fear of us, off of us right now in the name of Jesus. We pray, Father, for breakthrough in people's finances, and areas of provision. Father God, where people are, are selling houses and buying houses, we pray, Father, for release right now in these things, Lord, that they would come to pass just as you have ordained. And Father God, we pray, Father, for those around the world now who are suffering in areas of anxiety. Father, we ask that you would fill them with the peace, the perfect peace of your presence, Lord, for you are a good, good Father that you love the person that is watching this right now with a deep, unending love. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you will enter in, that you will bring your peace to all of their situations. We thank you in advance for breakthrough. We thank you, Lord, in advance for answered prayer. We thank you in advance, Lord, for the testimonies to come. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Emma. Well, coming up next, we have our friend Deb Deborah Mancha with a word of encouragement called Cast Your Cares. Do you know you can cast your burdens on the Lord? Cast your cares on the Lord and he will help you. In the word of God, it says in Psalms 55, 22, cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. It also says in Matthew 11, 30, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That is so cool that our God is saying that we don't have to live a life full of burdens, that we can give him our cares. So if something, someone, responsibilities are burdening you right now, there's a lot of things you don't know what to do with, anxiety, stresses, fears, you can literally cast them. Not just give it to him, like get rid of it as fast as possible because he's super strong and he can hold it. Keep going. I know me personally, one of the hardest things that I carry is the expectation of people, especially my family. So even though God is telling me, keep going, I sometimes tend to look back because I wanna help those that I feel are needing me. That's kind of my personal burden. So it can be anything like that too. 
Even that he's saying to cast your care. And I know that sounds crazy because they need you. You might be a mom, you might be a dad, you might be the head of your company. And he's still saying, cast your burdens, cast your cares on me. I am big enough. And when you do, you'll be lighter and you'll be able to run faster and you will be able to get to where you need to be. And those, those things that you're worried about, those people that you're worried about, God is going to take care of them. Way better, no offense, but way better than you can. <laughs> God, I pray that you help this person watching this video understand this, really understand and trust you. Trust you when you say that you can and that you are strong enough and that you want to partner with them, that they don't have to do it alone. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Learning to cast our cares, to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. It will make our journey lighter. It will make us able to do the things that are honestly, they're impossible. Ian, even just this whole subject of, of, of enduring anxiety and fear and stresses. It's almost the falsehood that we think we're on our own and we think we have to do it all. But in fact, as we cast them under his great hand, mm -hmm. wonderful things happen. Yeah, I like the image of casting, you know, a rod or yeah. your fears, because when you cast a rod, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know whether a fish is going to bite or not. You have an element of faith. And so when we cast our fears to God and onto Jesus, you know, we don't have to even worry about what's going to happen. You know, um. we are casting them in hope Amen. we are casting them in faith and it's hope and faith that is going to build our resilience so, so emma do you feel a bit encouraged after the program yeah absolutely i'm really encouraged i think it might be you know a little bit more of a of, of a woman thing as well that we're having to sort out not just our life but keep control of the kids and the husband and the work and you know it's hard but yeah to give it all over to jesus you know what a relief well what are the things that we do really need to learn from in fact our other colleague claire who leads worship at our local church the understanding that we get to walk in worship. Amen. If you're burdened, <laughs> if you're heavy, if you're struggling, even right now, then let us welcome you to the wonderful worship group at Highlands Worship. And as Emma and Ian and myself, we take time to pray to the King, then perhaps also we as the God TV family around the world can learn to pray to the Father, letting him take those burdens, those anxieties and stresses, and leaving us with a peace that passes all our understanding. Watch this and enjoy. Let the word of Christ my Savior dwell in me today. May his goodness be reflected in all I do and say. Let the wisdom of my Father be the light upon my way. May his spirit always guide me. I'm willing to obey. Let the love of Jesus fill me Like water fills the sea Let my whole life be a mirror Of the mercy shown to me Let the peace of God my Father Rule in everything That I might learn to trust Him in joy
May I run?